Good afternoon and welcome to Volvo Construction Equipment here in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. We're delighted to have you online today and welcome. You will notice that we are wearing our protective masks and we are staying our customary social distancing apart. But we've been thinking how can we get information to you who are sat back at home confined like we are. So today we're going to do the first live, live Facebook event uh, featuring the loaders and we're talking about tips and tricks of loaders. Today I'm, my name's Ian Harvey and I'm delighted to have Chris Connolly with me today who's Chris is one of our wheel loader experts. So Chris, when you're going out there to set your loader up to do some work with it, what are the few basic things that you want to look for before you start operating the loader? Well, let's talk about it, Ian. First of all, um, I'm going to try to concentrate on a lot of the, the front part of the machines today. We're going to take like kind of basic steps, but the first and, and foremost, th this, is your, this is your digging tool, um, our bucket. Sometimes we may refer to it as a shovel um, for our overseas guests, potentially. Um, but bucket level to me is, is really, really quite important. Um, to set your bucket level on these machines, it's really quite easy. We can do it from the cab on our L70 and up. Um, due to electric over hydraulic controls. But what you want to look for, how do, you, how do you achieve it? How do you see bucket level? So you want to see your cutting edge flat on the ground. And then when you look towards the rear of the bucket, if there are any kind of wear plates, you would want the wear plates, at least on our buckets, to be just about two inches off the ground. That way you know you have a good, um, basically a good angle to start with. Um, cutting edge wear is really, really important. So if you start that thing wearing poorly, if, you have, if you're up on too much of an edge, or too little of an edge and you wear, um, you're basically stuck with that wear and you have to keep changing your angle and making it steeper and steeper if you want to scrape. So is there um, a way to set that level? You set absolutely. It automatically? Absolutely. In the cab, um, we do have a sensor on our tilt linkage. So right on our tilt linkage, we have a sensor that basically reads the angle. Uh, we can level, we can set the level in a center point and, and actually level from either a carry position or a dump position. So after you dump into a truck, you simply just tap your lever um, and the bucket's going to return to that preset level. The level's going to stay in the machine until someone absolutely has to push the button again for it to, it stays in memory, so to speak. So it's not going to be forgotten, not something you have to do every time. Um, however, you would want to do it if you went from, say, like maybe uh, change your cutting edge or went to an, another attachment, absolutely. Then you'd look at changing your bucket level. But too, too much bucket level can be, you know, you're digging into the ground, you're yep, contaminating yep. your material. Too little, you're riding up on the pile and not getting efficient bucket fill. So it is, it really is that critical. So you can set that bucket level so you know how to dig. Um, just if you've got any questions out there for Chris while we're walking around with these tips, please jot your notes in, your comments and your questions at the bottom of the page, and we'll get to them as we w go through this. So as you're walking around, Chris, what do you look at at the bottom? Do you look at anything? So, uh, so if I was about to start operating the machine, you know, generally you're going to do some kind of pre-trip inspection. Yep. You're going to look around the machine. But for the purposes of what we're talking about today, we're looking at the front of the machine. We're going to look at basically condition of the bucket. We want to make sure we don't have any material stuck in there sure. that we, you know, would take away volume of the bucket for us. Um, I always make it a point to you know, kick my cutting edge bolts make sure they're not getting loosened up. If we're loading it in any kind of like a screener or a crusher and we get one of these loosened up and it falls into a screener or a crusher, I mean, there, there's potential damage there. I mean, so again, just something simple to check when they start getting loose, they, okay. you know, they'll, they'll yeah. elongate and you, you know how the rest goes right. for sure. So you've got the bucket, you've gone in, you've got a pile, you've got your dirt, you've got your material. What can you do if you're loading a certain way all the time? Is there other things we can set up? So what there, other there, tricks have we got? Absolutely. There's other settings on the machine. Um, we have what we call boom kickout, also return to dig. So our boom kickout, if we're loading a certain height all day long, say the, the trucks are very similar in height, um, or, or a hopper or something like that, a crusher, a screener, anything like that, we can set a predetermined height. That way the operator doesn't have to sit there and manipulate the lever the whole time, each time that they're trying to load into that, that, that implement, whatever it is. Um, real simple to do inside the machine. We're going to set our height, push a button, hold it, listen for a beep, it's set. Very similar to how we would set our bucket level. And where are they all, do are they on the machine somewhere? Can you see, can so you show them there? If you look very similar to our tilt linkage sensor, we can, we can take a look up top on, on the boom connected to our front frame. That sensor is going to monitor the position of, of basically our, our boom um, throughout the lift range. And that's where, you, you know, that's where the setting goes into. That okay, what if the setting fails? Can you level this up another way? Can you level the bucket up another way? Absolutely. So if we're talking back about the bucket again. Um, looking at bucket level, in addition to having that setting, all of Volvo buckets, basically the top portion of the bucket 
is going to be parallel with our cutting edge. Okay. So the, an operator also has a visual cue as well as that setting put in place that they can monitor their, the way their bucket looks so um, to, to make sure it's level. The, the other thing I want to ask is a lot of the time when we've done this work, we're going to go back and we're going to level ground out. Are there any tips and tricks that you know from uh, operating buckets? Absolutely. And going um, back with them. Grading, backblading, it's one of my one of my favorite things. I like to I like to do finish work. So certainly um, when you have a, when you have a really rough grade that you're working with, I'll tend to use I, I won't tend to use float or anything like that. I want a good bit of down pressure. I'm also probably going to put my bucket up on more of an aggressive angle if I'm having to move a large volume of material to fill in like really deep lows or cut off highs. And then when I start to get towards more of a finish on that grade. Um, what I'm going to do then is flatten the attitude of the bucket out and then start grading with the bucket flat and then I'll use my float float function. Float, basically what that does is we're going to disable our return to dig and then float, the operator is going to push the lever down and simply, it, it, it is what it, said, it sounds like, the, the bucket's simply just going to float with no down pressure over those highs and lows. It's going to get rid of those heavy wind rows that you see when you grade deep. Um, and, and just put a fine finish on it. So, that, and again, that's that's how I do it. I'm sure guys have other techniques out there, but that's 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 my preference. But by using float, you're not lifting those front wheels off the ground, correct? Exactly. You you, you really can't. You know, it, it, there's no hydraulic down pressure there to lift to lift the machine up or, yeah. or take pressure off the front wheels. Okay, let's talk about um, utilization of the loader. I know that we've got a bucket on this one, uh, and let's go over here because there's. Uh, I can see there's a quick fit on this, and uh, I know that there's times when the pins get stuck in there. What do, what do you do when you're with a, uh, a quick fit or quick carriage to make sure that it's in good condition and it works and you get the best out of it? So one of the biggest things I see with the attachment bracket is, is basically the, the, the pins that actually lock on the bracket, they, a lot of times they get overlooked as far as maintenance, like greasing, um, keeping the debris and stuff out of there. Um, this machine is fitted with an auto lube system. So the auto lube actually will directly grease these pins, but not, not everyone has an auto lube system. So at that point then, you're gonna have fittings, two Zerk fittings that you're gonna have to, to, to address for each, e each pin um, and, and make sure they're well greased. Um, that, I mean, when you have an operator complaining about slow actuation, um, sometimes the attachment doesn't engage very well. It, it, or, or it's really slow engaging, nine times out of 10, it's either gonna be material stuck in here or build up or, or just, just the lack of grease. Some other things I'd look for is, is you know, you wanna check where, you wanna make sure you take the attachment off from time to time. If you don't regularly, yeah. just, just once in a while to make sure you don't have an accumulation of debris, um, get, you know, just build up basically. And likewise, on the back of the attachment, the portion of the attachment that these pins engage, it's really good to take a look at that too and make sure that you don't have you know, any kind of build up there, anything going on there that would, would slow the whole process of, of making the connection, like slow that whole thing down. Perfect, perfect. Hey Chris, somebody's just uh, commented, they've noticed two different types of buckets here. What's the difference? I can see there is a difference. What's the difference between the two buckets? So we, 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 we offer two different style buckets basically on, on these machines. Um, this one is more of, a, we call it a custom built attachment, but this is set up as a rehandling bucket. So the rehandling bucket, as you can see, we have curved side plates, longer floor, um, different spill guard up top. It's really made, it's, it's purpose built for handling processed material, stone, aggregate, crushed stuff like that. Um, the bucket you see here is what we call a general purpose. This is kind of our all around bucket. So it, it's really good at just about anything. Um, Usually we tend to see a higher volume with our rehandling yep. bucket. We yep. also have to out the, outfit the machines a lot of times with, you know, a little bit of extra weight to, to maintain or to be able to, to lift that heavier material volume. Right. We've got the quick hitch. We've, we've figured out how to work the bucket. We've got the quick hitch on there. So that's designed to put different machines or different attachments on there. One of the attachments that has, goes on the machine more than anything, I think, is forks. Uh, I've always struggled to see the forks and move them. Can you give me some tips on how I can see them better and how I can move the forks backwards and forwards, which I struggle Absolutely. with. Absolutely. First, from, from a visibility standpoint, um, due to our torque parallel linkage, we have really good visibility of the forks. Um, and this is kind of an extreme case. These are long forks. Certainly these forks on any machine, you should probably be able to see the tips. Um, but in those cases where you run shorter forks, a lot of times maybe I'm, I can't see the tips. Um, then I'm, I'm looking at the, the top of the tine itself and I'm picking a reference point that I can relate to the, the being the tip of the fork. 
not only that, but if you've ever had to actually adjust the width of these forks, if you didn't have, say, like a powered or a hydraulic, yeah. you know, widening fork attachment, um, you'll know for sure if you've ever done this on your own, um, it, it can be a bear, especially when you have heavier duty forks. I mean, these forks are, are three inches thick, really, really heavy steel. So, I mean, it may seem like overkill. I have a lot of extra grease here just to kind of catch your eye, but right. grease is, is kind of important. Um, and then when I do actually move these, certainly we're going to unlock the locking mechanism. And then I usually kind of rock them, uh, top, bottom, bottom, yep, top, yep, something yep. like that, and wiggle them to where, where I need That'll to help. go. And then, of course, I don't forget to, to lock in and re-engage the locking device so the forks can, can stay, can stay so positioned well. We've got a bigger machine there. We've got a much larger machine here, which is the 260. And I'm noticing the linkage is completely different, Chris. Yes. What is the linkage difference, and how do they both work on the machines? So on our larger machines, L260, L350, we use what we call a Z-bar linkage. The Z-bar linkage is really designed um, around bucket dedicated machines or really, really heavy duty um, application type style machines um, where you need a lot of breakout force, heavy breakout force down low to rip and break out material. Um, our TP linkage, which we use from basically our, our L220 down, um, even into some of our compact loader sizes, um, it's, it's really the best of both worlds. We, we, st we still have a pretty strong, really strong breakout force down low with the TP, but the, one of the added bonuses to that is we get parallel lift all the way through the lift range, and also we're able to keep that strong breakout force through the lift range as well. Um, so, so basically, yes, you know, you may see there, there may be a little bit more grease points on this machine versus that one, but I think the trade-off is basically you have an all-arounder versus a, a dedicated, um, you know, heavy, heavy digging machine. Okay, um, with that, We've had a comment about, uh, I can see the strength in this. How confident are Volvo about? Because this is the strength of the machine. Tell us a little bit about that. So one thing we also do is we offer a lifetime frame warranty. So we're going to warrant the boom, basically the front frame, center joint, and also our rear frame. But the, to really, if we're focusing on the, the loading portion of the unit, really one of the, one of the key things that allows us to, to really extend that warranty, we double seal every single pin and bushing on this loader frame, on all of our loader frames on, on these size machines from L60, you know, all the way up through um, the larger machines. So that coupled with also our production practices, robotic welding, um, good quality steel, r really gives us the confidence to extend that type of warranty. So we give it a lifetime warranty on them? On the boom, yes. Great. So I think that was a quick overview. Thank you, Chris, for the Thanks. tips and tricks of how you operate your loader how you can work with attachments on there. We've been delighted at Volvo to host this this afternoon. We'd like your comments, we'd like your questions, and uh, if you like this, maybe next time we'll go in the cabin, because I know the cab's another world on its own. There's we'll a lot go in more there we can talk about. And we can talk about that, or we can talk about the engine. Let us know what you want us to do, and we'll be happy to do it. Uh, from Volvo Construction Equipment, thanks very much for joining, and have a very safe and good day. Thank you.